Hi. On the latest MakerCast, I did a demo of some tools I use here to automate control and measurement with test equipment like multimeter, SIGGEN, and scope. I'm going to show you how I generated bode plots for a very low frequency filter and how you can easily connect to your own instruments and control them and gather data. When you want to collect lots of data, ensure consistent behavior, or just be badass controlling the lab from your desk, these techniques are super useful. The fact that it's in Python means that it's flexible and extensible and easy to get started. Now, most bench instruments, even pretty low end ones, come with ports you can use to connect to them, like Ethernet, USB, or both. And when you're shopping for new gear, it's a good idea to check for these even if you won't be using it right away. After the port itself, the other thing to check is how exactly you'll be communicating with this thing. The physical link and layer is one thing, but the short of it is that you can talk to many, if not most, of them using the PyVisa Resource Manager, which handles a whole lot of links to protocols. And often the only thing you need to care about is finding the identifier to use as a resource name. Here I plug in the scope to USB and power it up, and a quick one-liner gives me this back, USB 0, 6, blah, 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 blah. So that means connecting to it won't be a problem. Even if it doesn't show up in the listing, say like this scope when it's connected through the LAN, you can still get the resource identifier by other means on the instrument. With resource name in hand, you can actually open it up and get a handle to it. This is an object with query, read, and write methods, and really, this is all you need to get going, as long as you have an idea what to say to it. If the thing has a name ending in instra, you can usually count on a few standards like IDN to get the identifier, or RST to reset, and if it implements Skippy, the standard commands for programmable instruments, then it's even better because certain classes of devices usually act very similarly, though arguments can vary a lot. Now, the Rigol scopes have a nice API document, and you can use that to know which strings to write and how to interpret what you get back. Now, this is all still pretty low level. One big step up for Skippy supporting devices is the Easy SCPI library. This thing is really sweet. It's nothing complicated, it just uses Python get attribute and call magic to instantiate properties dynamically and do querying, read, and writes for you. The upshot is that you create an instrument with that same resource name, connect to it, and then just act like anything defined by the API hierarchy actually exists. So calling timebase.main.scale without a parameter is like querying for the value, and with a parameter, well, then you're just writing to it. And that's much cleaner and fun to use. Now, if you have that API document, you're all set. To me, there are three downsides to staying at this level. The library makes no assumptions about uh, the instrument, which is flexible, but leads to typos and anything really being treated as valid, and so you're sending junk to the instrument when you mess up. Code completion in IDE or shell is just impossible. Any attribute is valid and none are known. I like, no, I need code completion. And finally, you're bound to the instrument's API. This one calls it an output, that one calls it a channel, this one says on off, that one says enable disable. I also have a thing for standardization. I want everything with multiple inputs or outputs to be called channel one, two, three. I want channels to be controlled with on off for, for all the devices. So I wanna be able to guess most of the time because of consistency and have code completion to help me with the differences when they're unavoidable. Enter my psychogenic test bench library. I've been using lots of this stuff for a while, but since I was showing it off, and since a lot of us use very similar tools, I decided it was time to package everything up and open source it. You could download all this stuff either to use it directly, if you have some compatible instruments, or as the basis for your own equipment. Let's see it in action. So I've got this active low pass filter I want to profile here, and I can't use a spectrum analyzer because the cutoff frequency is a few hundred hertz, way below anything my analyzers can handle. I'm going to play with four instruments here. The two most important ones are the signal generator that's feeding the input to the filter, and the O-scope, which is going to be looking at both the input and the output. And while we're at it, we'll also play with the power supply and the DMM here. Now, everything is connected to this laptop uh, through a single USB hub, and I'll be connecting to it from the desktop. Okay, let's give this a spin. I've got the lab back there uh, set up so that we can see it in the webcam here, and I'm also connected to uh, it via SSH through this console here. Okay, so you can see everything's connected through USB here. Uh, this is the signal generator, the scope, uh, stuff like that. Now I have this handy dandy lab instruments collection here. Now if you wanna do the same for your setup, you're gonna need these identifiers. So the first thing is to get that. Just import any of the uh, Skippy instruments in Python, and then from there you can go list resources on the class itself, and it'll just dump out whatever it sees. So with these in hand, you can set up uh, the lab like so, just import the right classes, and then from there associate class 
to ID. And that's it. And from there, you can just use the uh, console like this. And this gives you a nice little lab.dso that you can play with, like so. But let's say you don't want to use this nice little console. You can go with your own script or just Python in general, import the instruments and instantiate those directly, or import a, a lab collection like that. Whichever you choose, uh, you'll end up having uh, access to your devices like this. So now I've just connected to this PSU and you can see it has some completion here, channel one, channel two. Uh, so let's play with it a little bit. So PSU recall two, you can see it changed there, recall one. So I can set the, I can query the voltage that's set or set it to something else. There you go. So all the instruments are pretty much the same. Uh, you can um, access them like this. Get a little shortcut here. Uh, so I can go trigger dot auto, let's say, and DSO run. And here we go. Uh, I could change the bandwidth. Let's put a 20 megahertz there. Clean that up a little bit. Whatever. The point is uh, you have access to your instruments. So what we're going to do right now is just disconnect from everything and try out a little script to do some profiling. So this script is one of the examples that comes with the library. Uh, you can see what we're going to be doing is sweeping from frequency min here to max in steps of 10, uh, putting in a 0.5 volt uh, VPP uh, signal and just sweeping that. The setup comes in here, sets up uh, the DSO to measure the input and the output, trigger uh, appropriately and things like that. The PSU ramps up just because it's fun. The SIGGEN starts uh, setting up sine waves on uh, output one, on channel one, and then it'll sweep through them. And the DMM is connected too so that we can actually look at the uh, input current. So I'm going to start this up now. It'll start by playing with the PSU and then uh, trigger everything else to get going. So here we go. PSU, okay. Now, what it's going to do if you pay attention to uh, the oscilloscope and the signal generator here, uh, okay, it's begun. What it's doing is it's sweeping every frequency and every once in a while, it scales the time base by using a utility function in the DSO. So here it goes, it goes, okay, okay, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It's measuring the VPP and the, on the in and the out and the frequency on the in, and it's just putting everything in there into a CSV. We can see the output here, it's, it's already at uh, 300 hertz. And so the signal is gonna start getting smaller and smaller. If we check it out, Mm, yeah, 350, here we go. Now we've hit the knee and it's starting to go down, down, down. I'm gonna let this script run and then we'll uh, process the data and see what comes out. Now that we're up at one kilohertz, uh, pretty much just noise is left. No. Okay, we're done. So it spit out this file here, this LP filt test. And if you take a look, it's just a CSV file with the frequency we set, the frequency measured, the input and output VPP, and the current, uh, just because. So let's see if we could graph this. So I've got a little utility function that's going to give us two graphs at the same time. So let's set multiplot. Just call it. <laughs> Check it out. Pretty sweet. Okay, so we can see that around, uh, what is this, 332, oh, and it starts coming down. So we're down 20 dB at 730 hertz, and then we get into some noise. Interestingly, just as we come around the knee here, you can see that uh, the current consumption, I mean, it's very small, but it actually goes up right where the interesting stuff begins to happen. That's cool. Not super useful, but cool. And that's how I automated collection of data for a whole bunch of profiling of this circuit. Yeah, pretty neat. Scripts like that let me tweak and profile the circuit until I got a satisfactory result. With this setup, comparing configurations was as easy as running a script, so it took no time to tweak the filter to go from this purple response to that beautiful blue. Nice. But I've also used them for all kinds of characterizations, testing, and quality assurance. 
Now, if you're using any of these specific instruments, the library and samples will just work. If you've got something else, but it also has a way to talk to it, extending the library shouldn't be too hard. Now, I'd love to include contributions and might even be able to uh, assist in getting more hardware working, so send pull requests or get in touch. Have fun. Cheers. Thank you.